Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I am Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Can you tell what we're talking about today? You guys, it has been a very long time since I've done a lash video. And if you are new here, welcome. If you um, follow me over on Instagram, you've probably been waiting for this video since I did the tease showing you guys some of my Amazon lashes. I have been a long-term user of Lashify for five years. I've worn them almost every single day. So I'm going to tell you all the ins and outs, what you need, what you don't need. What? I recommend after using a at-home lash extension system for five years um, so that you kind of have the best resource in order to know how you can use it on the daily and in an affordable, sustainable way like I have found through the years. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and thank you for being here. Okay friends, so I'm gonna show you an application, but first let's get started on what exactly you need to know. If you don't know what Lashify is, it is a, like I said, at home lash extension system. Um, they call it Gossamers, and each set of lash can adhere underneath the lash line and you can wear them for about a week. I wear mine for a week minimum. I have got them to last longer, but it's about that time that I'm like, I'm ready for a new set. I'm ready to rub my eyes a little bit um, and start fresh. But I have been wearing Lash Five for five years. So when I found it, it was a complete game changer to me. I love having my lashes done without having to go to a salon and get extensions, which are pricey and time consuming to sit in a chair. I wanted to be able to do it myself. So if you are not new here, you've probably seen some of my older Lashify videos. And I'll be honest, a lot of those are kind of outdated by now. I will say that Lashify changes all the time, that even it is hard for me to keep up with all of their new releases, um, application techniques, things like that. But I will show you what I have gotten to work for me consistently. For the past five years, I have done nothing but, well, I'd say the first year I was still experimenting, um, trying new techniques because the system was very new. Um, and so the products that were being released from them, they discovered new ways of using them better through, through trial and error, just like anything else. I've done my own trial and error, and I'm going to show you exactly how I apply every single time and how you can use different lashes in the same way, what tools you need, I would say that are maybe must-haves from Lashify and what you can get away with saving a little bit of money on. I know for me, it was the initial investment was a lot at the time. And you guys, I mean, I have literally everything Lashify has ever made. I have it all and I've tried it all. So if you have any questions, over specific items just let me know in the comments below but you guys I if you don't know this about me I'm a very transparent person I'm not going to lie to you I make no money off Lashify I'm not affiliated with them in any way I'm just a long time lover of their system but I have found my own way as well so when I first started it was long before they even had their own things like pre-cleanse and melt away. It was like you had to find stuff at the drugstore to prep and to remove them. Um, a lot has changed, like I said before, from they have literally everything now, from spoolies with their name on it to little like applicators, disposable things. I'm telling you guys, I have everything even down to the robe. <laughs> Remember back when I started, this was like the it system. There was nothing comparable, but I'll be honest, you guys, now there's a lot. There's a lot. In fact, I, the idea for this video, in fact, um, came about because I started using 
and testing alternatives on Amazon because now there are a lot of very similar ones out there. I'm not gonna say that they're all the same, but I'm gonna explain to you why, how you might have some cheaper alternatives if that's something that, if Lashify and the subscription is too much, um, there are other options, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with application. The number one question I get, because I do help a lot of fellow Lashify lovers in my DMs just because I do have so many application videos, is how to get them to last a full week. And I will say, just like anything else, um, application has a little bit of trial and error. From personal experience, my first application was the only time I ever lost any in my sleep. But I adjusted and my application got easier and easier every time I did it. It got faster, it got more strategic as I learned my eyes and what I needed in order to keep them on for a week. And what I tell my clients when they're when I'm troubleshooting with them is that it is less about the bond you're using and more about how you are applying it and how you are placing it on your eye. I can get the exact same wear time from all of their bonds that are supposed to give you longer wear time than I can with drugstore bond, okay? so. Know that is much more based on your application than what bond you're using. Don't get so caught up in like, do I need all of these bonds when you're starting out? I don't think it's necessary, okay? So just my experience, but everyone's eyes are different. Everyone's skin is different. Everyone, how oily you are, your shape of your eyes. All of those things do play a factor, and so it does take some trial and error because you have to learn what works best for you, okay? So let's get started with the pre-cleanse, all right? I'll be honest, I get less wear time with their pre-cleanse than I do with just my cellar water. I don't know why. I've tried it for years, and I get a longer wear time with this. So. Um, I know they say, oh no, you have to have oil free and there's oils in this. I'm a chemist. There's no oils in this. It won't break down your lashes. I promise I've been using this same bottle for five years. I kid you not. I'm finally about to need more. Now, granted, I literally only clean my eyes to do this method once a week because it lasts me a week. So if that tells you anything, um, black Q-tips, I get them off Amazon. I will try to link everything I can that is not affiliated with Lashify um, that might help you save some money. Black Q-tips, again, you can get them on Amazon. They also have some on Lashify, they're identical. The reason why they recommend black is if you are cleaning it so you don't get white fuzzies stuck in your eyes or in your lashes. I only use them to clean the the lid. So honestly, now that I think about it, I don't know why I use black <laughs> because I, it really doesn't matter because I don't have lashes on my eyes yet. So mm, I don't know. Anyway, all I do is use micellar water and I, whoops, I spill it all over the floor and I soak one end and I'm just going to rub this across my entire lid. Okay the whole thing. I'm going to focus on the lash line and I'm going to go under the lash as well. Okay. So that any residual oils, whether it's from skincare, whether it's from overnight when our skin produces more oils, all of that is not going to be a factor because if you don't know, these gossamers, they will, the individual lashes, the spine of the gossamers will start breaking down when exposed to oils, okay? So oils are not our friend. All of the lashes I've ever used, they work in the same way, okay? So you need to make sure you don't have any oils, excess oils on your skin. Again, because if you do, your lashes are not going to stick adhere and they will start breaking down. If you're having issues with your lashes actually physically breaking at the spine while on your eyes, it's an oil issue, okay? So 
sometimes it happens to me when I've been testing some of these brands that maybe don't have as good of high quality gossamers um, or lashes, if you will, they will start breaking up in here. And you got to think of it logically. Where do our eyes tend to pull the most you know, sleep and, you know, all that stuff overnight is in this inner corner and sometimes this outer corner. So if you have lashes there that are breaking up, it's because of the oils just produced naturally. There's not a whole lot you can do about that except just kind of gently remove it and replace it. Or I'll show you with application how I avoid that is just avoiding certain areas of my eyes, getting too close. Um, and I don't have that issue ever, except for if I try to go too far in with not as high quality lashes, I do see that, okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay, while this is still damp, I like to clean my tools. So if you look at old videos on my channel, I did do a comparison very, very long time ago, back when the very first system that was comparable to Lashify was released. Um, which is the Falscara by, is it Ardell? Who makes this? Nope, it's by Kiss, okay? And so they looked kind of like this. The lashes were kind of limited. They were all the same size, thickness. There wasn't a lot of styles. I have seen that they have um, added to that since then. Their tool, on the other hand, which I might have thrown away, is not superior. So, the first thing I recommend from Lashify, no matter what, is the control wand. I have so many. I have one in my bathroom, one in my purse. I just bought their new Birdie, which is a smaller one to stay in your purse. I will be honest, this is harder to apply with. It's just, it doesn't have as much, it, it's harder to apply with, in my opinion. Maybe it's because I've been using this same one for five years, but I like to have two, one with just the metal to actually put them on with, and then one with, these are called wandums, I know, but um, they're like a silicone cover and they do give a wider fuse, which is how you clamp them in order to get them to adhere properly to your natural lashes. And I do like fusing one last time always with the wandum. I don't want to take them on and off. What can I say? I'm lazy. So this one is always my application wand and this is my last fuse. Their wands are by far superior than anything I've seen. I do have the newer one that's supposed to be better for smaller eyes it still doesn't fit my eye properly. So even though I do have small eyes, that one's still, like I said, I've tried them all. I, this is just one of the normal ones, both of this was like the original one. And um, this one just seems to be harder to apply with. I don't, I feel like you got less of a, I don't know, less um, room to get in there. Do you see how much smaller it kind of is? And sometimes I'm trying to like go in around lashes to fuse and this one is just harder for me. But this is my favorite, the control wand. It's the best application tool I've seen of all the lines design wise, it just makes sense. It's supposed to be designed so it fits literally over your nose even so you could fuse this side um, and fuse, you know, this way as well. I do a reverse fuse, which means my eyes are too small to like get the entire thing. And I'll show you when I do it. Um, and so it just doesn't fit. So I reverse fuse and clamp each section individually. Either way works. It's completely fine. But this wand just, I've tried other ones. They just, it doesn't work. It's not easy. Um, this one makes it easy, I promise. Once you get basic placement down, the wand will make it so much simpler. Talk lashes real quick before we get into the bond because once I put that on my eye, I'll have to hurry up and put them on because it'll be sticky. Um, Lashify by itself in large as a whole, the company will have more of a selection of lashes than anyone else. The quality is always good. Um, 
there are so many different styles, colors, hybrids of styles. They're always coming out with new ones and styles are all very different though. Um, so most people ask me when they're starting with the control kit, cause usually you get the choice of A, B or C, which one to start with. I would say usually my first question is what kind of look do you want? Do you want the most natural? Do you want something that looks more like you're wearing mascara that you'll be able to see more so from farther away? Or do you want something that you can reuse easily? Because I'll, like I said, the beginning investment is there. Um, not all their lashes, I would say, are comparable as far as being able to reuse them. And what I mean is when you take them off, okay, and I'll show you how to remove them, but when you take them off, and say, are you gonna just throw them away if they're not broken at the spine, you can reuse them. So one of the things I do like from Lash5, if you really wanna get it all, is this Gossamer storage case. I literally just take them off. Now granted, I do not reuse all of them, but I do the more expensive ones, more of the volume collection. It, I Those that have a thick enough spine, which is, can you see how thick that spine is? That one is thick enough that it is not gonna break down after one use. It's not gonna break down after five uses usually, but ones that are, let's see, this is the C, which is one of the, do you, oh, it's so hard to show these on camera. Do you see how thin that spine is? This one tends to break and not be able to be reused. Once the spine breaks, uh, you won't be able to put them back on. They will fall off. The volume collection tend to be a little bit thicker. They do not come in the control kit. Um, at least at the time of this video, they don't, but things are always changing. So um, I like to take those off and then I put them in this storage case. Sometimes because I wear a lot of different styles, I will make sure they're organized by style because I'll be honest, once you get them off the eye, it's so hard to figure out after years i can now identify them but it's hard to figure out what they are all you got to do to clean them grab some isopropyl alcohol i like 91 percent 70 will work too um and all you got to do is soak them fill it up so you can submerge them honestly you don't have to submerge them even very long i'd say um five ten minutes and then you can take them out and then I would recommend using black Q-tips. <laughs> Holding them with your control wand, you can remove any excess bond. That way you won't get white fuzzies in them. Now for years, I just put them in a little glass jar or a plastic dish. You don't need anything fancy like this, but I do really like this to even put a few extra lashes in when I'm traveling just in case one falls off, which I'll be honest, has never happened to me, <laughs> but uh, it can, you know, you never know. I've, I've literally taken the, worn these lashes to the Dominican Republic and jumped off of cliffs into the water and they haven't budged, okay? And I'll show you what bond I was using for that. Okay, so, and it wasn't lash fry. The isopropyl alcohol, is all you need. Um, micellar water is not gonna get off the bond as well. Um, this sanitizes them and removes the bond so easily. It is a game changer when I discovered this. So if you reuse them, you're, you're, you're gonna get more bang for your buck because again, especially the volume line, they're a little bit more expensive, um, but they last a lot longer. There's no reason to throw them away after one use in my opinion. So the core line, which is A, Bs, and Cs, out of those three, bees have the thickest spine and won't break down as quickly. They are still thinner than some of the volume ones though. So they still will break down before some of those will, if that makes sense. Um, out of all of them, I've, I, I'd say A is the most natural, the least amount of curl. It's kind of more of a straight lash. Um, the one I just showed you was a C. Um, the Cs are curlier, but still very natural. The bees would look more like mascara. I recommend the bees 
because for one, you're going to be, if you're new and applying them for the very first time, I feel like they're easier to apply, they'll last longer and they can be reused. They kind of look like you're just wearing mascara, but they're not too bold. That's gonna make you feel like you got too much on your eyes. With Lashify, I remember the first time I put them on, I picked way too long and wasn't used to them and it felt really awkward. But with time, you get used to going thick. You can totally go thicker and longer over time. But just don't go too fast, too much all at once if you're starting. And buy a bunch of 18s or 20s. I bought 16s and I was like, I can't wear these. They're touching my eyebrows. And so some of the volume line, like the EEs are very like thick and bold. And I would have never been able to wear those in the beginning, but then I got to a point where those were my favorite for a while. The control kit is great. 12s and 14s are the most universal length. I would say try the Bs unless you want super natural, like barely visible, or like your lashes are very natural and just longer, then I would usually recommend the Cs. Um, the A's on me, if you have hooded aging eyes like me, the A's are not the most attractive for, I would say, hooded eyes. They're too straight and the one lash I can't wear. They don't look good on me at all. So again, it depends on your eye shape. If you've ever looked at Lashify's site, you'll see that there's, oh, and there's, there, they have an entire community page on Facebook of lash maps and all the things. It can be very overwhelming. Um, so sometimes I like to just recommend if you do want to try another style, my by far my favorite, and I will never stop buying this style, is, I need to open this so I can show you guys, is the SB16s, okay? It's hard to find a style like this anywhere else, because I've tried. Um, they're called Starburst. They're thick enough that I can wear them without stacking. They have a nice, like, natural shape to them. They're not too blunt at the end. These are the one style I can wear these all the way across and I don't have to pick smaller lashes for the inside or outside corner because of this nice taper it has on every individual lash. They're by far my favorite. I love these because I can put these on really fast and easily because I'm just sticking with one lash. Lash maps are fun. It's fun to try a new lash map every time. Some days you just need to put them on really fast and run out the door. And that's like my go-to when I need fast and I know they're always gonna look good. They look great with no eye makeup on because they're still very natural, but they still look thick enough that when I am showing eye looks um, and tutorials, you can still see my lashes. Some of the more natural styles, you can easily lose your lashes if you're gonna be doing any kind of dramatic eyeshadow or not even dramatic, just eyeshadow in general can kind of make them hard to see because you're not applying mascara to give them that more thicker, blacker look. Does that make sense? So SB16s are my favorite. If you're looking for something in the volume collection, a lot of times people are asking me over on Instagram, what lashes you have on? Nine times out of 10, it is that style. But like I said, I've recently been testing some from Amazon. I've mainly stuck with one brand, but I've tried some other ones that have not been successful. Um, like I was talking about ones that just like kind of break up on the eye. Some just don't work. But these are very similar to the E style that used to be on Lashify and I loved them. And last time I checked, they don't carry them anymore unless they're just sold out and they took them off the website. I don't know, but the EE -E is different. That's like extreme, I can't remember, they have so many names. The EE -E is a lot thicker. It's the probably the thickest, most dramatic as far as thick lash. Um, now I've tried a couple different styles of these and I'll link the ones below, but they either come in like a D or a C curl. D curls are like the EEs. They are very curled, okay? On me, they're too curled that they hit my hooded eye, especially the inside corners. They look extremely fake. But the Cs, I can wear. It's a less dramatic curl. It has the same curl as um, the Bs, Cs, 
the SBs that I like. That is that curl, and you can compare on Lash Vice site all the different curls. That curl is very good for hooded eyes or aging eyes like me that is trying to kind of hide some of that texture, right? So I like the C's by far. This one actually did not was also horrible as far as breaking up. Some of these are really good. They're just all the D curl. And so if you like a stronger curl and you like the and the more of the EE -E curl than these Ds you would like. But on me, they're too much. And they seem to have more styles in the D curl than the C for some reason. But so these have been my go-to. And I've been testing them for months and they wear no differently. They don't break up, nothing. They don't break apart. They do come in 10, 12s, 14s. They might be come, or no wait, this is, just kidding, this is 12, 14, and 16. Uh, they might go higher than that, but that is as long as I can wear. Again, when I started, I could not wear a 16 at all. They looked way too, too dramatic, but now I actually do like so, them. Since so many people on Instagram were wanting to know what kind of dupes these are. Again, I'm still looking for ones that are gonna be more similar to my ride or die SBs, but I haven't found any yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these just so you can see that they don't look any different than the Lash Fi ones I've been wearing for five years. They don't wear any different and they also clean just as well. They don't break up with the isopropyl. I've tried that as well. Now I will say one thing that you do get a lot of lashes in here and I want to say they're like it's like seven dollars for does it say how many's in here Let's see if I can do some math okay 72 oh, it's, <laughs> I just multiplied and it it says right there okay anyway uh 72 lash lashes there in a gossamer cartridge you get one two you get 12 and this is about $25 and this is seven. Okay, so that's why I, I've always wanted to bring more affordable options to you guys that I know want to be able to wear lashes like this, um, which is why I originally tried these back in the day. I just, do you see how thin those are in comparison? Like they're so much thinner. If you want a super natural, like this is like an A, okay? Super straight, super natural, not a lot of thickness. I do feel, I do, I have seen that they come in other lengths now, but back when I tried these, they were all one length, which just did not work for my eye. But I will say with these, the one thing you can probably see right there, where one split apart, you do have to be careful getting these out of the package. Um, the Lash Fi ones aren't even like glued in. They just barely pull out. In fact, sometimes they just fall out. But these, you really have to make sure you're not grabbing them by the tips because this is like really sticky and it, you can rip one apart, which is what I did. So you want to make sure you're grabbing them by the spine and then pulling upwards so that way they don't fall apart. So I'm just going to do a basic... Um, fan that I like to kind of do on the daily when I'm doing this kind of lash look. I always like to pull them out beforehand. I put them right here on my mirror so I can see them and easily pick them up. Lashify does have a sticky pad that you can do use and they kind of adhere so they don't, you know, get blown away. I don't really find the need for it and let, I mean, maybe if I had a fan above me, I would need something like this, but I don't, um, but it's cool in concept. So I went ahead and just pulled out one 16, two 14s and a 12, and I'm gonna see if that works for cross my eye. Okay, I've got my control wand ready. Let's go ahead and talk bond. So like I said before, I've tried all of the bonds in every way, shape, or form. And if you do have the bonds, I'll link the videos below that kind of show some different ways of using them. I will say though, I no longer can use any of these. Um, I, not to say they're not good or anything like that, but after years of using them, I developed eye dermatitis. If you've been following me for a while, you know I struggled with that. 
and I, it took me years to figure out, honestly, it took me probably at least a year and a half to figure out that it was being caused by my bond and even the top coat, all of it. And the chemist in me, of course, had to look into ingredients and I figured out that they all have a very similar ingredient and I think I'm, I developed an allergy to it. So eye dermatitis is not fun. My entire eyelids and underneath would swell, turn red and start peeling. And until I just stopped using anything on it, it wouldn't heal. So I had to find something else. And so I already had this one from when I tested these. And this is the uh, Falscara one that you can just get at the drugstore. I wanna say it's probably $10 or less. And it does not have the acrylate that these have. And I have no issues with this. And what I discovered was that using it, it did not change my wear time. It didn't change anything, except that I wasn't having an allergic reaction. Both the bond and seal work great for me. I've tested just using the bond and then using the glass um, top coat with this, and I'd have a reaction. It was literally any, any of that. So I stopped using all of it, and I've been using this for a year now and I haven't had any issues, and I've never gone, <laughs> I've never had my lashes last less than a week. So it works just fine. But what I do realize with a lot of troubleshooting with clients is that they think it's the bond and that they need to go with a stronger bond, like bondage or night bond or something like that. And talking to them more is it's usually not the bond, because even their weakest bond, which was the Whisper Light, I could get a week, week from, it's placement, okay? So we're gonna go really hard into placement on the eye because I feel like that prepping the eye of oils and placement is key with these lash, lashes lasting. It's not the lashes, it's not the bond, it is where you're placing it, okay? So I'm gonna try to get all up close and personal so you guys can see. I do always recommend having a mirror so that you can tilt it so you can look down in a mirror makes application about 10 times easier because you have to be able to see your water line. So if you don't know what your water line is and if you don't like to look at eyeballs, this video is probably not for you because you gotta really look closely at your eyes when you are doing this kind of application. And your waterline is the skin between your natural lashes and your eyeball, okay? If the spine of this touches it at all, you will not get good wear time. And it's not very comfortable too. If you blink after you apply and you can feel these lashes at all, your application is off. Okay, so we're gonna go in with this bond. Now this bond is most closely um, like the bondage, in my opinion, which I think is why I originally didn't like this one as well, because I was used to using Whisper Light. It's all I needed, and Whisper Light isn't as tacky. It doesn't dry. It, I liked the white because it. if you got it on your eye, it doesn't like make a mark. It's very easy for newbies because it had this cool wand where you can really place it exactly. I do really like this. Um, I wish I could still wear it. It was good. But um, bondage, and I don't even think it's in this kind of tube anymore. I'm not sure. Came with a little bit of a little wand, micro wand like this. And it was much stickier, much tackier. It was black. So if you missed and got some on your eye, it was messier. It was harder for newbies, I felt like. So this one, I didn't originally like because it was like bondage, okay? But it had a bigger, I mean, I guess wider, but not as long um, type of mascara wand. Just like anything with practice, you, you figure out how to make anything work, especially when you have to. So I always take it out and get off excess, okay? The thing with bondage is you want to put very, very little through your lashes, okay? If it is thick or clumpy, you're going to be able to see it through 
your gossamers once they're on your eye. Okay, so I always hold my eyelid upwards. Let's see if I can get in close. And I'm looking down in this mirror because I, there's no way I'll be able to do it from here. Okay, I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna get a really light, like I'm talking, you doesn't look like you're wearing mascara. If it looks like you're wearing mascara, you have too much on. Okay, really light. And I don't go all the way to the in, inside corner or all the way to the outside corner. And I'll explain why when we're talking about placement. But I'm just going that main area. And you can kind of feel it already feeling tacky. Okay. Then I go in with the very tip, which I had already kind of like removed excess. And I'm going to place it. I don't know if you guys can see. At the base. About a millimeter. It's already, I'm talking too much. It's already getting dried up. About a millimeter up from the base of your waterline. So here, I move over a little bit. Probably a little bit more there. A little bit more there. I can tell I got too much in one spot, so I'm going to correct it. Here's a new tool that they just released that I actually do like. Before this dries down too much, I'm gonna go ahead and place my first lash. Okay, I like to go in with the 16 first. And I'm gonna go not to the end, not exactly to the middle, just a little bit. And I want you to see, I don't know if you guys can really see. Can you see? The key is you can see your natural lashes in between the gossamer spine and the waterline. If you can't see any of your natural lashes, the root of your natural lashes, you need to push it up more. Okay, and the reason why this one's a little bit harder is because it adheres pretty quickly to where it, it doesn't move easily. Whisper light, you get a little bit more wiggle room because it doesn't dry down so fast. Okay, so then once it's where you want it, you take the end of your control wand and you squeeze along that spine. And that will fuse it. Now it's not going anywhere. Now it's stuck, okay? Between every lash, you make sure you don't have any of that bond on your wand or when you go to your next lash, it's gonna, it's gonna stick to your wand and not your eyelash and then you gotta start over. It stinks. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with bond. And now this is really important because the best way to get all day wear is to not place these lashes to where these ends, cat hair, where the ends are just side by side, okay? If they are side by side like this, what's gonna happen? They're gonna slip and they're gonna break down the middle and suddenly you're gonna look at your lashes and you're gonna have like this like hole almost where you have this separation, this gap because they over time will move a little bit, okay? So, I brick stack everything. What does a brick bricks look like? They're staggered. Okay. So no matter what, these corners of my lashes, my gosh, the cat hair is everywhere today, are always going to be barely stacked on the corners like this. Okay. So that way I won't get any gaps. And to me, when I figured that out, it was just, I never had any issues anymore. And I notice I my if I happen to be doing it too fast one day and I don't get it on there good and I it was too much like this, I sometimes will get them to kind of slip and I can see it and it drives me crazy. But this, you have to make sure you put on a little bit of bond. So if this was the one you're gonna place on your next last, so this is the one on right now, if you put a little bit of bond right here, that way when you put that next one on, it adheres. Otherwise, 
you're gonna have this kind of like coming off. And let me tell you, the ends of these aren't always, even with Lashify and the high quality ones, sometimes they have like, not sharp edges, but sometimes they have a little bit of an edge on it. Can you see that? And it pokes up and then it starts like poking off and it's a lot easier for it to come off if it's not fully adhered. When they're fully adhered, I, they're not going anywhere, okay? So I always go back in with more bond and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do the corner now, okay? So I'm gonna go right on top of that corner and then right next to it on my natural lashes because these gossamers do not adhere to the skin. They only adhere to lashes. So you have to have natural lashes in order to wear these. And I'm gonna take it by the tip and I'm going to again place and I'm gonna make sure it's on that bond. I can see my natural lash under it before I fuse, okay? Now, something really important, and I've gotten this comment before and people are like, why is it, why is it not all the way over? If you want these lashes to last a week, you have to be very mindful of what your natural lashes look like. I naturally have very, pretty short, straight lashes. Okay, they have not changed. I would say, because people ask me, they damage your lashes over time. My lashes have not changed and I'm I'm really bad. I don't use an eyelash serum or anything. I probably should. It will keep your lashes healthy if you do. But I just, the only noticeable difference is that, because I haven't worn mascara in five years, is that my lashes are straighter than I realized they were before. Now granted, I always used to use an eyelash curler, so maybe that's why I never curl my eyelashes anymore. The only noticeable difference I've noticed, my eyelashes are straight. They're very, very straight. Um, but other than that, nothing else has changed. Just a heads up. But I don't have super thick lashes, which is one of the reasons why I started using this in the first place. Lash serums, all they do is increase your lashes life cycle. Okay, so if you don't know, that's all they do is that the, you don't lose lashes as fast. They stay on your eye a little bit longer, which means they can grow longer and you notice the length more because they're on your eye before they shed. Okay, so it, I think it extends by like 10 days or so, something like that, depending on, depending on you, of course, as well. But they don't actually cause you to grow more lashes. They just don't. They don't. Re they don't really cause thickness. They call they they give length. So my issue was always I wanted thicker lashes. Since that wasn't gonna work for me, I had to get thickness in a new way, right? So my thing is that I have no lashes from here. My first lash start about right here. Okay, so all this down here, there's nothing for it to adhere to. You can't adhere this to skin, okay? And if you only have like two or three lashes right there, you're, you're not gonna get any longevity. It might last a day, maybe two if you're lucky, but if anything, it's probably just gonna cause irritation. So that is my issue. When I go in too far in here, the spine of it actually will start rubbing here because it's barely touch, it's barely adhere to my two lashes I have there and it, it causes me to get red and inflamed and it actually flares up my eye dermatitis that I now deal with all the time. So inside and outside corners, my number one tip, move over a millimeter. No one is going to be looking at you that closely. You do not need to go all the way in here and all the way out here, look at this. I've got like maybe two lashes there. Okay, if you are a side sleeper like I am, the first thing you're gonna see is that that corner is gonna be lifted because you're sleeping on your side and you're too far in this outer corner. 
if you move it over a little bit, I still am a side sleeper. Granted, I use my special pillow. I highly recommend it to anyone who is wearing lashes. So it has like a cutout. I'll link it down below. It's called the Sleep and Glow. It's got a cutout for side sleepers so it doesn't give you wrinkles. But I originally got it so that it wouldn't smash my eyelashes and then I could get better wear time. And it totally worked. So going farther out on that outside corner though, you're only going to get lift and you'll never get your lashes to stay. Same thing with the inner corner. Like I said before, your oils and stuff kind of accumulate there. That will be the first place that your actual gossamers will start breaking apart. And if you don't have very many natural lashes like I do, that's going to be the first place you lose one because there isn't anything for it to adhere to for a long extended period of time. So I don't go very far in on purpose so that it will last. Okay. So leave a few lashes out. Literally, I mean, if you can see the outside corner of my eye, okay, a couple millimeters in and you will be good. How many gossamers you apply across your eye is purely based on the look you want and the wear time you want and how big your eye is because everyone has different eye shapes. But no matter what, I recommend doing that brick stack for better wear. If I have an event or something and I want really a beautiful lash look with you know, I'm not really concerned about it lasting more than that day, then I will probably, I sometimes put them farther in and then by the next day, that's usually irritating my eyes and I will just pull off that next lash and you can't even tell because the rest of them look very similar to how I wear them on a daily basis. So, but I know that those will never last me a full week. It just doesn't work for me. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in exactly the same way. I'm gonna go to the, on top of that lash, right next to it. A Little bit more bond. This one is tacky enough that you don't have to wait for any dry time. You can just go straight in with your lash. Okay, so this one is a 14. So I did a 16 first, 14 on the outer corner. I'm going to go in with another 14 overlapping that 16 and then I'm going to go in and fuse okay with my reverse fuse if I was to try to go in this way I don't know if you can see it never gets at the base. My eye is just not shaped like this, okay? Okay, now we're gonna come into that inside corner. I am literally gonna use one more, but I'm going to angle it towards that inside corner so that it doesn't look as obvious that I'm not going all the way in. It's the only way I can get mine to last a whole week is not to go too far in. So same thing. Now here's where I feel like I sometimes will be able to see through this lash and see like my, my sometimes my eyelashes get clumped if I have too much of the bond and that's why I grabbed this tool. So that's what it's for. So it's got this, it's got kind of a dangerous pointed pointed end, but I don't know if you can see that. See how they kind of clump? Oh my gosh, if I can get it. There we go. And you can kind of separate that weirdness, but man, be careful because that thing just stabbed me. It is really sharp. I don't really, I might need to like sand that down or something. I don't feel like it needs to be that sharp. All right. So then when I pick up this one, I'm going to try to pick it up at more of an angle. So when I put it on, it will kind of fan towards that inside corner.
And some days it gets on there better than others. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, eh, it's not the best application, but it's good for now. Okay, once they're on and you like it, I like to go to the seal. So the seal on this is very similar to the seal and finish top coat or glass. And I always liked glass because if you have an option, the glass is better to waterproof with Lashify. But I wore this one to the Dominican and was in water all day and they literally still lasted me all week and I never had to do anything to them. Um, so I'm guessing this is a waterproofer as well. So I like to go under and then also on the other side. Now this will take away any tackiness, waterproof, all the things. Okay, so I like to coat the entire lash. Then I go in with my other wand that has the wandum and I go in and I do numerous fuses. Then I like to go in with some kind of fluffer. Now I've had this one forever. You can probably tell it's got a lot of seal and finish or sealer on it. The sealer does kind of make sometimes the lashes kind of stick together, but Lashify recently came out with the their own like they are like silicone spoolies, which I feel like are nice to have at least a couple of, but you can also just get spoolies off Amazon. But sometimes you need a spoolie. Kind of will separate them again. And I'm always asked, how do you clean your lashes if you get eyeshadow or whatever? Sometimes mine is just cat hair. I just use a spoolie and then I can brush through it to clean them. Or you can dip it in the micellar water and then brush through it and it will clean it really easily. And these disposable ones are like, they're actually, this one's black because it has bond on it, but they're like little white. They're also actually bristle brushes. Um, these are really good if you um, need to maybe add more bond to a certain spot throughout the week. Say you didn't quite get a good overlap and that, that one's starting to kind of peel upwards or whatever, or your outside is starting to lift. You can take this and you can get on whatever bond you're using and get some of it on there and then strategically go in and place more bond and then fuse where you need it. So sometimes you don't have to take off the whole gossamer section. You can just kind of save it. Okay, I'm back. I got my full set on. I feel so much better. So you can probably see placement, hopefully. Can you see how you can see my natural lashes under there? Okay, that is what you're looking for. So I recommend even if you start with the control kit and want to pick up some of these cheaper lashes to kind of nail down your application method, then you can really have a lot of fun playing with lash maps and some of these really cool styles from Lashify. But you can also get a really great everyday look from just using the budget friendly ones. All right, well, when it comes to removing them, I will say the melt away makes things really easy. Um, so when it comes to removing, you do have to use something that's not going to break your lashes apart, especially if you're wanting to reuse them. Um, I will say that if you're ever in a bind and you don't care, let's say you're wearing Amazon lashes cause I throw these away and you don't care if they get broken apart, any kind of cleansing balm, which is oil based, will completely take them off, but you're also going to completely ruin and destroy them at the same time. So if you don't want to ruin them, make sure you are using something free of oils. Their melt away is really good. You just put this on a cotton swab and rub it, run it along like the lash line, top and bottom, give it a few minutes, and then you can easily use either a cotton round or a wipe to kind of like gently pull them away. You just don't want to be tugging at them in any way. So I did try the Falscaro remover as well. 
they're both the dual phase, it works as well. I will say that this one is a little bit better for sensitive eyes. This one kind of stung my eyes a little bit, but it worked the same. And this one is a lot more affordable if you need something from the drugstore. Now, one thing that Lashify does have, and I just bought myself another one, is, don't mind me, I, something got stuck to mine, but I've had this a really long time. This is their release, which is like their portable melt away. And I tend to use this more so than this. Um, all it is is like a big mascara wand and you run it like on the bottom and the top of your lashes and it works so well. And then you just do the same thing and remove it. And I tend to like this, it's less messy. I don't have to get out cotton swabs and it works just as fast, if not faster in my opinion. So I do really like the release if you're looking for a remover. You can just take them out, plop them in a case, any case, and pour some isopropyl alcohol on them and let them soak. That way, when you're ready, you can clean them and they dry really fast because it's alcohol. It evaporates immediately. So I hope that was helpful in kind of some tips and tricks when it comes to Lashify. I will never stop wearing my at-home extensions. I love them. They make my life so much easier to just, I feel a little bit more put together when I wake up with my lashes done. I don't miss mascara at all. And now that I kind of found the necessities for my lash routine, it's so quick and easy. I can put them on in 10 minutes and be out the door. So I will link the lashes I found on Amazon that I'm liking. I will continue to try to find more. So be sure you're following me over on Instagram. I will share, of course, if I find some other ones that I really love the style that hold up. Because again, that is a necessity. I would say... Definitely start with the control kit if you want to get started with Lashify or at least pick up the control wand. I would say this is your numero uno, even if you just use this bond and these lashes and some micellar water and some Amazon Q-tips and this to take them off. You would still be set. You can get spoolies off Amazon. I use tweezers a lot of times. You don't have to spend a lot of money. No one will be able to look and tell the difference between what lashes. In fact, I've been asked several times out about, oh, which, which Lashify lashes are you wearing? And I'm like, these are actually Amazon lashes because you can't tell. Granted, you will have a lot more variety of styles with the Lashify one. I really love to do a new lash look every week you're gonna have a lot more fun playing with all the styles and the options. The quality is there. Um, the Lashify subscription is definitely worth it, in my opinion, to save you money. I've had a subscription for five years. You need to skip when you want, and definitely even being a part of their community is gonna get you lots of tips and tricks for application with no matter the brand you're using. I forgot I have this too. This is the curler. Guys, I'm telling you, they come out with amazing products, I will be honest, but you don't necessarily have to have them all to get the look. If you have any questions that I missed, please drop them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help. I will link everything that I can. And thank you guys so much for being here and watching. I'll see you next week. Love you.